Transmission and Distribution Systems Part 1D, Secondary Distribution Infrastructure. This is the fourth part of Topic 1, the Structure of Power System, and in this part we will be introducing the different types of distribution systems such as ring mains, radials, and interconnected systems. Now in the previous part we talked about the primary transmission system, and just to give you an idea of what's ahead in Part 2, we'll have several conversations about basic power transmission infrastructure, overhead versus underground system, transmission line models, and representation. And lastly, we have transmission line parameters, capacitance. An electrical distribution circuit is divided into two main sections, primary distribution and secondary distribution. The primary distribution circuits deliver electric energy from the distribution substation to the distribution transformer. While the secondary distribution circuits carry electric energy from the distribution transformer to the electricity meter of the end consumer. Distribution systems have evolved into different forms around the world and the two main designs which are followed by majority of the countries are the North American and the European designs. For both system topologies, the components used in the systems are very much the same, and both systems are radial. The main difference lies in the layout, configurations, voltage levels, and applications which can be seen in this diagram. The North American layout has three-phase four-wire primary, single-phase laterals, and split-phase distribution transformers. Voltage levels at the service mains is 120 to 40 volts, while European layout has three phase three wire primary, three phase four wire secondary, and three phase distribution transformers. Voltage levels at the service main are 240 480 volts. Generally speaking, an electrical distribution system at the secondary stage consists of three distinguishable conductors, namely feeders distributors, and service mains. A feeder, also called mainline, is the backbone of the distribution circuit which connects the substation or localized generating station to the area where power is to be distributed. And current remains the same throughout a feeder because it supplies current without being tapped at any intermediate point. A distributor is a conductor which tappings are taken for the supply to the consumers. The current throughout a distributor is not the same because tapping are taken at different points along its length. The branch conductor are also called taps, laterals, or branch lines. A service main is a conductor that connects a distributor to the consumer terminals. The distribution system can be classified according to the types of conductors as overhead systems or underground systems, according to the number of wires, which could be three wire, four wire systems, and according to the scheme of connection as radio systems, ring main system, or interconnected systems. Before we investigate the connection schemes for distribution system, here is our pitch to support General Pack. As you're watching this video, we hope you find it useful and engaging. General Pack creates video tutorials so people like you can learn about power systems easily and efficiently. Subscribe and become our donor on patreon.com slash generalpack to get voting rights on our next topic, patron first video releases, exclusive behind the scene content, scheduled webinars, Q&A sessions, and more. Look, the reality is very, very simple. We need your financial support to continue making these videos. So become our patron, get exclusive perks, and we can't wait to see you on the other side. Thank you for your support of General Pack, and we hope to see you as a patron. Now, continuing on to distribution systems. So first of all, we have radio systems. And in this type of system, separate feeders radiate from the substation and feed the distributor and branch into the subfeeders and lateral which extend to all parts of the area being served. A radial system is used when the load is operating on low voltage and substations is located at the center of the area which is covered by the load. It has a low initial capital cost, requires simple planning, and it is the simplest among all, but it also has some drawbacks as well. The portion of the distributor near the feeding point will be severely loaded. The consumers are dependent on a single feeder. 
Therefore, any fault on the feeder or distributors cuts off supply to the consumer who are on the other side of the fault, which is away from the substation. The consumers at the far end of the distributor would be subject to voltage fluctuation when the load changes. And due to these limitations, it is preferred to use this system only for short distances. Secondly, we have ring main system. And in this type of systems, the primary side of the distribution transformer are linked to form a loop. The loop circuit starts from the substation bus bars, makes a loop through the area to be served and returns to the substation. Therefore, it consists of at least two paths between the substation and the consumer. The ring main systems have some advantages over radio system. The system is very reliable as each distributor is fed by two feeders, and if a fault occurs at any single point in the feeder, the continuity of supply will be maintained. The consumers face fewer voltage fluctuations through the injection of current from both points and although it has some advantages, it is difficult to design compared to the radial feeder. It also has a very high capital cost due to the extra cable and layering. And thirdly, we have interconnected system. Now when a feeder ring is energized by two or more generating stations or substations, the resulting formation is called an interconnected system. By increasing the number of supplies, the service is made reliable. Any zone fed from one generating station during peak hours can also be fed from the other generating stations. This reduces the reserve ca power capacity of a single station and increases the efficiency of the overall system, hence minimizing the current stress on a single feeder and reducing line losses to improve the quality of the service. It however, requires a very high initial investment and careful planning and design. The operation of the interconnected system is one of the challenges that electrical engineers face. Now, in the next video, we will start a new topic in which we will be discussing the fundamentals of transmission engineering and highlight basic concept of electrical power transmission. We hope that you have a continued interest in this topic and this series as either a student or a professional. We also hope that you find this content useful and enlightening. Please consider subscribing to generalpack.com or becoming our patron at patreon.com slash generalpack. Making power systems intuitive, open, and free to everyone, everywhere. Thank you.